Family, welcome once again to this session where we're talking about the faith that God has given us. This time around, I just want to start by prayer, um, knowing all the time we pray uh, for the time such as this to share the word of God. But I just feel impressed in my spirit to, to start with prayer. Uh, let's just pray together. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to speak a word that comes from you, a very heavenly dimension, a source of speaking. Honestly, any man who speaks a word does it by grace. And I feel the same sense today that your word, the Bible says, is life. If the word has to produce life, only God can give men the life that the word is and speak it into the lives of our hearts. And Father, so I pray in Jesus' mighty name, enable me to speak life. Your word has come to give us the energy, the power. Your word is power, the Bible says. And only God can really give that ability to do that. I'm reminded of John, even as I pray, the Bible declares when he was challenged to say his ministry is moving from him to Christ, the Bible says, he says, a man can only receive that which is given from heaven. Right now, speaking the word of life, the word with the power of God can only come from an approval of heaven. And I pray as we engage with your word, may it become life to us. Let it not be just empty knowledge. Let it produce the life that Christ is. There's so much theological debates and some of it very helpful. But at the end of the day, the Bible says Christ is the word. And he himself said, I have come that you may have life and have it more than in abundance. It is the life that the word is we're looking for. The thirst we have, the hunger we have for your word. It's that it must hit our spirit life, must hit our soul, must hit our flesh and produce the life that it is unto us. So we pray as we speak that cause life to flow to every one of us that hear your speaking, me included. Let it be not a speaking of the intelligence of men or the intelligence of our wisdom, thinking of the things we read and studied and call that wisdom. Let it be the speaking of the Holy Spirit that can only produce life when it comes that way. So we pray even as we receive salvation, it was because the Holy Spirit took your word and declared it to us and we became children of God. The same life let it flow as we speak concerning your word. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said amen. I want to continue to look at the empowerment that God has given to us as people in the earth. We're looking at corporate or community faith that has been given to us by God. And we started in the previous sessions that I've already spoken to, if you've been listening or been able to connect with us, that faith is a divine law. Faith is a law from God. Faith is a divine law that has a real life. It has real structure that flows out of God himself. It is living and it is a gift that God has given us. We read in Hebrews 11 verse 3, the Bible says, By faith we have come to understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It, faith is, is that life of God that he created everything when he commanded, he commanded everything by faith, by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. Faith, it's a real life. It's a real law by which God himself operates. By faith, he commanded and everything was created. Faith was sent to a creation that was specific. Faith is particular. Faith is not general. Faith operates within the scope of the speaking of God, I said in the previous talk. Remember all God's creation is purposeful. 
Nothing that God has created just occupies his space. Everything has a purpose in life. And faith, therefore, is particular to the will and the purposes of God. I even said that will and purposes of God is the word of God that has come and given unto us through Christ. Christ being the word himself. So therefore, faith is particular. Faith is specific to the things or to the will of God or the purposes of God. Faith actually is an empowerment that God has given to men. Faith has come to really empower us. Um, it, is, it is a part of God that he chose to give to us so we may be empowered in life. It's a gift of God. Faith is a gift of God to empower people. It is not a hidden mystery as though God is putting it away from people not to be able to access it. But faith is intended to be accessed by men so we can be empowered to can draw life out of the speaking of God. The commanding of God carries life in it. We draw that life when we come into faith or by faith itself. Hebrews 11 verse 33 we learn that by faith, uh, these people overthrew, or the people of God, or the former saints, overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They did that by faith. They discovered faith, that it is faith that will draw out of the speaking of God life. God speaks life. God speaks power that is intended to come into us as human beings and cause us to have the life that God said Christ is to us. By faith, these saints, they were able to overthrow powers that would be against a life, that would be against a person. Uh, they ruled with justice by faith and they received the promises of God by faith. Faith empowers a man to draw life out of the instructions of God. It empowers us to draw life out of God himself. Verse 13 of Hebrews 11, it says, All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here in the earth. The empowerment of faith does not only assist us or enable us to draw life out of the promises of God for this current earth. But these people, they discovered that the speaking of God had also a future way ahead of us that can only be seen by faith. Faith being a real transactional force, if you like. Faith being a real empowerment to see beyond words spoken by God. Uh, faith causes us to see the things because the Bible says uh, uh, God created things. By faith, he created the things in God, the purposes, the plans, the life that is ahead of men was created by God by faith. Faith causes us to see into the will of God. It, see, it causes us to see into the futuristic plans of God. And these saints in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says they were able to see beyond where they were the plans of God for their lives. It is one thing to think of faith to, to, to empower me for earthly life, but that's not the whole picture. The completeness of the picture of the promises of God is beyond earthly life. They were able to see the completeness of life, the whole scope of our lives in Christ, and they already believed it embraced it and by that they called themselves pilgrims who are journeying to the end of the dream of God which is eternal life. It took faith for them to see it. They were not convinced by it. They saw it. They were persuaded so much that they accepted they were foreigners in this current world doing all the things we need to do discipling nations, winning souls, and building families, building businesses, and building churches, and working in government, working in business, and helping communities, and helping people, yet they still knew, knew 
this is something we are passing through. They were going all the way to the end of God's dream. God had an awesome dream that was stable, that is remain that remains to be accessed even today by faith. It was by faith that they were able to see into God. Faith causes us to see into the mind of God. Faith is connected to the divine speaking of God only. I want to underline that word. It's connected to the divine speaking of God only. Faith is not something we make up. Everything we make up frustrates us. We believe God for things that are outside His scope. We believe we can do certain things outside His scope. And when those things don't happen, we get frustrated. Uh, faith is linked to the divine speaking of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The Bible declares, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When God speaks his word, it produces faith. And that speaking of God becomes the context of applying our faith. Faith comes. Faith has its source in God. Faith has not its source in my dreams, in what I believe. Faith has its source in what God says. The speaking of God produces faith. Even as I speak right now, the speaking of God has to produce faith. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. In itself, faith is an instruction of God. God has instructed the saints. He who comes to God must believe. He who comes to God must come by faith. It's so interesting that even when Jesus had resurrected and one of his disciples called Thomas just did not believe. And he said, unless I see him, I would not believe. And Jesus appears with, a, with, with, a, with an immortal body to his disciples and Thomas was in their midst. And Jesus began to speak to Thomas and says, look at my hands and touch me and touch at these marks to show, to prove that it is me. And he says, but you must believe. You would have expected at that time he did not need to exercise any heavenly structure of faith because Christ was standing right in front of him. Uh, but here he is in an immortal body and an immortal body has to touch an immortal body. He says, you have to believe. Don't be without faith. You have to touch me by faith. We can never touch the things of God. We can never touch a dimension of the life of God outside faith. God has given us faith to empower us to interact with the heavenly life that we have been given in the word of God. Hence, God puts it as an instruction. And he says in Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. It's not an option. It is not an option. The just shall live by faith. If there's anything we need to master in our relationship with God, is to master faith that God has released in his way. Because there's no any other way to live with God. The just shall live by faith. Faith draws from the speaking of God. The Bible says, He whom God in Romans Chapter 8, he whom God had known before, foreknown by God, he then calls next step. You know, he had ordained us and then he calls us. He whom he foreknew, he ordained, he calls us, he calls You know, because there is a place he wants us to go into. He had established a future and created us for that future. And he says it is accessed by faith. Faith is the way for us to can access the future speaking of God. Such a life of faith calls men and every man who comes to God to accept the role that our faith in Him will bring forth the promises of God. Our faith in Him will draw the things that God has already spoken in His Word. It will draw the future that God has spoken in His Word. And because of an ability to operate in faith, the Bible says God so approve a life of faith in such a way. In verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 11, it says, But the truth is that they were yearning for and aspiring to a better and a more desirable country. That is a heavenly country. For that reason, God is not ashamed to be called their God even to be surnamed their God, Amplified would say. 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for he has prepared a city for the people who walk by faith. God is not ashamed to take a position of being named after the people who have such a kind of faith that is not only a today's faith, it's a faith of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is futuristic. The kingdom of God goes through today and it's pointing at tomorrow. They saw a country beyond here. The Bible says even Abraham himself, he lived in temporary dwellings because he knew our permanent home is where God is. And the only way to get to him is by faith. Hence, he is the father of our faith. God has approved and showed us the standard of living is by faith. If you look at verse um, 11 of Hebrews chapter 6, 11 to 15, the Bible says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience, they inherit futuristic promises of God upon your position of life. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, the Bible says he obtained the promise. In the similar way we are given this patriarch of faith to say pattern yourself after him there is a speaking of god that's calling us to a higher place a higher dimension to a futuristic place from where we are and we grab hold of these things that god has set before us by faith however it calls calls for diligence it calls for patient enduring it calls for a commitment of seeking to see what God sees, seeking to hear what God says, so we can continuously receive the elements that build faith in our hearts. The more we can hear God, the more faith develops in us, the God faith develops in us. The more we can stand in the Word, the more we sharpen our spirit to can develop that faith, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Throughout the Old Testament, the Lord would decree a word over his people that, that would then form a place of exercising themselves in faith, develop faith for them to go into the things that God has said. The, the confidence of walking with God comes from the speaking of God. It's important to hear God when he speaks. You know, when God speaks, our ability to hear will develop faith in us. Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 36. It says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. Do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promises of God. Promises of God are drawn out by His word. However, here it says, Do not cast away your confidence if confidence is an element of faith confidence it is it is it is confidence in the in the in the things that god helps us walk in and if confidence is that important god therefore builds confidence in us in the same way that the bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by his word god's intention of giving us the word is to develop this power to be able to draw life out of his word in the same way God develops confidence. I'm reminded of a situation where when the enemy comes sometimes to attack our lives, um, we just need to remember one testimony that the Lord has been with us. If we can know and remember that God has been with us in one occasion, we can develop confidence in that. Everything that God does in us, things that we may call testimonies, miraculous things that God does in our lives, we need to be able to remember these things to can build confidence and therefore have our faith and courage. 
David says, your testimonies have been my meditation. Meditating upon the testimonies of God. The things that God has taken us through deliberately to build confidence. Deliberately to build our faith. You know, Jesus himself, when he walks with his disciples and at times they would doubt him, he would ask them, haven't I been with you enough for your faith to have been so developed by now? You still need to be developed when I have worked with you deliberately to try and strengthen you and build our faith. Each one of us had things we can point to. Clearly that can tell us God was there when I went through that thing. The objective of God was so that we can have our confidence being developed. We can have our faith being developed. So when we enter another dimension of our walk with God, it will attract obviously certain, certain challenges that comes. Because the Bible says whenever the word comes, the enemy comes quickly to challenge the word that we receive. However, meditating upon the testimonies of God should draw confidence that the God I've seen yesterday is still the same God today. He remains the same tomorrow. I can walk today and I can walk tomorrow because I've seen him yesterday. Our journey is God marking us and building us and building a character of faith, building the confidence of faith, building the hope of faith. And hence, I love that statement that David says, the testimonies of the Lord are my meditations. They help me go through today when today I cannot seem to see the light of day. They help me face tomorrow with confidence, although I may not know what tomorrow brings. But because of the testimonies of God that I've already seen, my faith is being sharpened. My faith is renewed and I can stand day after day and face the life that is ahead of me. Draw it out of the word of God by faith. In Jesus' name right now, I pray that the Lord will continue to cause us to recognize faith has come to empower us. Faith has not come to be something that we are afraid to engage ourselves into. Faith has come to empower us. We need God to speak to us time and time again with an expectation that our faith would be built. So may the Lord encourage us. May the Lord build us. May we continue to engage with His Word and draw life out of His Word by the faith of God in Christ Jesus. And God bless you. Amen and amen.